Hey there and welcome back to NBA 2K17. My name is Pete and today we complete the first year of NBA 2K17's My GM or My League mode with the Sacramento Kings. After the departure of DeMarcus Cousins, the Kings have more or less entered full rebuild mode. And they already have a few young assets with players like Heald, Carly Stein or Lebissier, however their future is nowhere near as bright as it is for teams like Minnesota or Philadelphia. All in all, we are still dealing with one of the worst teams in the league, however one that has a nice young core and one that is not completely out of options. We will get into what those options are in a minute, but first let's have a closer look at the team's situation right now. Starting at the point guard is either Darren Collison or Ty Lawson. Collison is slightly better rated, but both are expiring, so you might not be able to rely on them long term. While a few veterans here and there can certainly keep a rebuilding team from falling apart, your long-term plans are likely going to include someone younger. That person might be Langston Galloway, who came from the Pelicans in the Cousins trade, however his ceiling is somewhat limited and unless he accepts his $5.5 million player option, he is also expiring after the season. The shooting guard then looks a bit better. Buddy Heald is your highest rated player and currently one of your best assets, so making him the starter makes a lot of sense. Behind him you can choose either Flalo, Temple or McLemore as the backup. I would personally put my money on McLemore, since a Flalo comes with a hefty price tag and both a Flalo and Temple are also getting a bit old for a rebuilding team. McLemore is a bit of a liability on defense though, so keep his minutes limited, especially against strong attackers. Richardson then can be kept around, as he might develop into a suitable backup player if you give him enough time. Let's move over to the small forward and that position is home to your highest rated player, although one that you can barely call a star player. Rudy Gay is good but definitely not able to carry a team on his own, plus he is on the wrong side of 30 and his $13 million contract could expire after the season, unless he accepts his player option. As a team that is fully committed to rebuilding, his potential departure should not hurt you that much and his trade value is probably not high enough to give you anything great in return. Another player that came from New Orleans is Tyreek Evans, who actually started a very promising career in Sacramento as Rookie of the Year, but sharply declined after that. However, yes you guessed that right, he is also on an expiring contract. And that brings us down low, where the Kings seem to value quality over quantity. Although quality is not necessarily what I think about when I see Anthony Tolliver, who is currently your only listed power forward. Luckily, some of your centers can step in, because with a 73 overall rating and on an expiring contract, Tolliver is definitely not starting caliber material. We can find much better options at the center, where the Kings present us with two serviceable starters in Willie Cauley Stein and Scal Labissiere. Labissiere also works nicely as a power forward, so starting both of them alongside each other is likely the best option. Both Kufus and Papagiannis have roughly the same ratings, and you can either pick one or both of them as the backups of the bench. Now we have already covered most of the expiring contracts briefly just a second ago, and as you can see, a lot of personnel is about to hit the market in Sacramento. Among those expiring contracts are a lot of core players who currently have starting jobs or important roles off the bench, so you are potentially losing some solid assets. Apart from Ty Lawson, all your upcoming free agents can be signed to an extension during the regular season, and we will have a look at those in a moment. Ben McLemore is going to become a restricted free agent, so you can always bring him back on a qualifying offer, which should be worth roughly $5.5 million. Alternatively, you have the option to match any offer another team makes him, or if you feel like saving some cash, then don't offer him the qualifying offer, this makes him an unrestricted free agent and maybe you are able to sign him for less money that way. That is a bit of a risky approach though and not really necessary, since you do have a lot of cash. Now there are two players on the Kings who have player options, and those are Langston Galloway at the point guard and Rudy Gay at the small forward. Galloway could stay for another season on a $5.5 million salary, Gay could come back for roughly $40 million. The Kings also have three team options to think about. Aflalo, Tolliver and Carly Stein have one coming up, and Carly Stein is probably the only no-brainer candidate among those. Now let's quickly talk about cap space and for the 2016-17 season the Kings still have a bit of room under the salary cap, which would allow them to add another $5 million. 
Once free agency starts, they could have up to $70 million in cap space. However, that amount will be slightly lower thanks to options and potential contract extensions. In any case, you should still be able to sign at least one max contract player if you decide that is what you want to do. Now, as you can see here, the Kings do not seem to have their own first round draft pick in 2017. That, however, is only true under certain circumstances. The pick is currently residing in Chicago and has a top 10 protection on it. Should the Kings end up in the lower third of the league, and that is more than likely, the pick stays in Sacramento and the 2018 first rounder goes to Chicago. Additionally, the Kings also own the Pelicans first rounder and that pick might also end up in a lottery. But keep in mind that a full season of Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins could very well put the Pelicans in the playoffs in 2K, so I wouldn't bet on this pick to land you a superstar. The Kings are also loaded with second rounders, so you have a lot of trade sweeteners if you need them. Now as a result of the situation overview and before we go into the three moves, we always do our three key questions. Those are three potential issues that might arise in your first season with the Kings, and having an answer for all three of them might make your life a lot easier. Question number one, how aggressively are you going to rebuild? There are several philosophies when it comes to a rebuild. You might decide to move everyone above the age of 25 for picks or younger players, or you could take a slightly more conservative approach and go a bit slower. This decision mostly affects your older players who are still under contract for a while, but it should also guide you when it comes to potential contract extensions. Players like Darren Collison or Aaron Aflalo come to mind here. Question number two, which position has the biggest need? You do have a few assets to make moves, but you are certainly not drowning in them. Chances are you will not be able to put a young up-and-comer in every position in just one season, so you have to set priorities. With two starting caliber players expiring and potentially leaving, the point guard is a good option, but so is the small forward for the exact same reason. And question number three, are you going to trade Rudy Gay? Now, on paper, Gay is definitely your best player. His player option will not screw you over financially, even if he takes it, but it's still an uncertainty factor. As a rebuilding franchise, Gay will likely have no long-term future with the team, and you might want to move him while he holds at least some value. On the other hand, shipping him off might create one more hole that you will have to fill in the offseason, and you already have your hands full. Now, when it comes to players that I would not move in Sacramento, Buddy Heald, Willy Collie Stein and Scala Bissier are at the top of the list. While none of them is a true superstar, and they will probably also never truly develop into one, they form a very nice young core that you can build around. The rest of your team is not irreplaceable though, and can be moved freely for the right offers. And now we are almost ready to get into our three moves, but before we start, I would change either Scala Bissier or Willy Collie Stein to power forward and start them alongside each other. Both get a rating increase, but because of his better outside touch, I went with Le Bissier. And now for move number one, we are going to trade Aaron Aflalo. With our first move, we will cut down our shooting guard rotation. With Buddy Heald coming over from New Orleans, we have no need for the services of four backup shooting guards, and the Flalo sticks out with his $12.5 million salary. Garrett Temple can at least be a serviceable defender, while the Flalo is just one more shooter that we don't need with Heald and McLemore on the roster. Since the Flalo is already 31 years old and fairly expensive, don't expect a great player in return. Still, a few interesting options are available. Both the Nuggets and the Pelicans are willing to part ways with a lottery-protected first-rounder a few years down the line. And while that is not the most intriguing offer, it might make some sense for you as a rebuilding team. However, whether or not a Flalo is truly worth a first-round pick, even a protected one, that is certainly up for discussion. If you are willing to acquire a bit more salary long-term, the Mavericks are offering Wesley Matthews. While he is listed as a shooting guard and you might now rightfully think that this move doesn't really solve anything, Matthews works just as well as a small forward. With Gay potentially and Evans definitely expiring, acquiring a starting caliber player here is not the worst idea. On the other hand, Matthews is very expensive, also above 30 and also has a potentially troubling player option coming up. Similar issues exist for trades involving guys like Evan Turner or the Murray Carroll for example. The trade I eventually settled with was this, Aaron Aflalo and a second rounder for Spencer Dinwiddie from the Nets. 
With Lin and Whitehead battling him for minutes, Dinwiddie will likely not see much playing time in Brooklyn. Additionally, the Nets have a few expiring wing players themselves, so acquiring someone they can keep for at least one more season has some value. The second rounder is added to make the trade a bit more fair, and we grab ourselves a young point guard with solid potential. As a result of this move, we now still have Temple and McLemore competing for the backup shooting guard spot. And if you want to, feel free to switch one of them to small forward, where both of them work just as well. The situation won't be much better there for the moment, but if you don't bring Tyreek Evans back, the small forward holds a lot more potential to get solid minutes off the bench. With the arrival of Dinwiddie, we also have a rather clogged point guard rotation, although this is exactly what we now tackle in move number 2. Because in move number 2, we will stabilize our point guard rotation. Now, there are several ways to go about this, and I will go into all of them briefly. If you followed my move number 1 and acquired a point guard, I would now offer a contract extension to Darren Collison. Collison can be a starting point guard for the next few years, and locking him down gives you one last thing to worry about. His salary should be in the $10 million range, which is not cheap but alright for a player of his caliber. With Collison remaining and another point guard arriving as a result of move 1, I would now however trade away Langston Galloway. In my case, Dinwiddie is younger and has a higher ceiling, while Galloway only has a potentially troublesome player option coming up. However, if you desperately want to hang on to him, $5.5 million are not that high of a price to pay. Still, for a third string point guard, you can probably find someone cheaper on the free agency market or in the draft. Now, if you did not acquire a point guard in your first move, I would still offer a contract extension to Darren Collison, but I would also definitely hang on to Galloway, as the two of them can be a serviceable duo for the next few seasons. Even if you plan to draft another point guard or want to sign one in free agency, this procedure makes sense, as there are a few risks attached to both Galloway and Collison. Despite it being rather unlikely, Galloway might decide to opt out of his player option, and the backup point guard you believe to have is now gone all of a sudden. Additionally, Carlson might not want to sign a contract extension, but that would be the smaller problem as the decision has to stand by the end of February, giving you enough time to plan ahead. Generally though, it's better to have a point guard too many than to be left with another hole to fill. Since I acquired Dinwiddie in move 1, I signed Collison to a 2-year extension with a team option for year 3, and I traded Galloway for some more depth down low. For Galloway and the second round draft pick, I acquired Jordan Hill from Minnesota. Hill won't see minutes in the cluttered big man rotation on the Timberwolves, for us however he could prove to be a valuable backup solution should anyone get injured. And that brings us now to move number 3. Check where your first round picks will land and deal with the remaining contract extensions. With Ben McLemore becoming a restricted free agent, there is no need to sign him to an extension now. Yes, you would save a bit of money, but you can sign him for much longer if you go the traditional way, bring him back for one more year on a qualifying offer and then sign him to a long-term contract. The real question here concerns Tyreek Evans, and here is where your draft picks might be of some help. If one of those picks is going to end up somewhere near the top of the draft and a quality small forward is realistically available for you, you can safely let Evans walk and replace him with a rookie. If that is not the case, there are arguments to be made to sign Evans to an extension. Assuming that he is willing to resign, you will have to spend around $10 million to bring him back. Ultimately, this is up to you and the decision is of course also affected by how you deal with Rudy Gay. If you decide to move Gay, then Evans is left as your only solid small forward, so bringing him back seems sensible, even if it's only on a short-term extension. However, if an aggressive rebuild is more up your alley, then getting rid of both Gay and Evans can also be justified. I personally did not offer an extension to anyone here, since I expected good draft positions for both my own and the Pelicans pick. That ended up to be true, so I grabbed myself a small forward in the draft and then accepted the options for Carly Stein and Dinwiddie. The $8 million option for Tolliver was declined since we are able to bring him back for much cheaper. Rudy Gay also declined his player option, which now leaves us with a hole at the small forward, but more than enough cash to throw at the problem. Now, how will things progress from here? The Kings are likely a team that needs to get a bit worse before it can get better. With a lot of core players expiring, it is high time to fire up the rebuild in Sacramento. 
I would not let myself get attached to the solid ratings of players like Gay, Evans or Lawson. Once you are able to assemble a competitive squad, those guys will be long gone. Instead, try to focus on youth and build around Heal, Le Pissier and Carly Stein. Carlson can keep your offense flowing for a few more years, so in your first offseason you can concentrate exclusively on finding a small forward for the future. Once you have one under contract, you can fill the remaining holes on the bench with some young talent and jump right into the next season. Unless you are able to lure a true superstar to Sacramento, the Kings are going to stay at the bottom of the Western Conference for a while longer, but that gives you plenty of time to collect assets and slowly turn the franchise around. And that would now be it from my part, and I have to apologize that this video went up with a slight delay. The last few days have been pretty stressful, but things are about to get better soon. So I hope to get the next video up a bit faster. Until then, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!